Louisville, Colorado is consistently recognized as one of the best places to live, not just in Colorado, but in the whole country. If you've referred to it as Mayberry, you know from the Andy Griffith Show, you wouldn't be the first. Every year, the small town between Boulder and Denver holds the only Labor Day parade in the metro area. The annual parade honors Louisville's past and celebrates its present. Now we've got the Louisville Middle School. Yeah. Last September, the people of Louisville looked forward to the future with optimism and excitement. No one on this perfect late summer day could have possibly imagined what their town would look like just six months later. Colorado is seeing its first COVID-19 cases. This is news. That Governor is Polis expensive. today declared a state of emergency. We now know of 17 cases of the new strain of coronavirus here in Colorado. The latest case. Downtown Louisville could be downtown anywhere. The pain small businesses are feeling is the pain small businesses feel everywhere. This coronavirus winter may be best viewed through the lens of a still camera. These are portraits capturing the human condition in black and white. Hello everyone, I'm Gary Shapiro in Louisville. Like most towns in Colorado and elsewhere, it has been economically devastated by COVID-19. Former Nine News photojournalist Chris Wheeler lives here and wanted to document this time in history. Since he didn't have a video camera handy, he grabbed his still camera and started taking pictures. For the next 30 minutes, we'll share them with you. Tomorrow, Colorado's restaurants and bars will close to dine-in service. We begin with the governor's order that will affect more than 12,000 restaurants and bars and hundreds of thousands of workers and their families. At Gravity Brewing in downtown Louisville, it began as just another day. It ended like a nightmare. Having 300 people in a bar in Denver all rubbing shoulders and drinking together, I mean, that's, that's the big source of transmission that we are worried about. While the regulars sat at their bar stools, the owners were beginning to understand the gravity of the situation. In spite of the governor's orders, some people kept showing up to gravity hoping for a beer. Management had no choice. They had to tell their best customers to please stay home. For Louisville, Colorado, it was the beginning of a coronavirus winter. Overnight, small business owners closed their doors. Not knowing when or if they would ever open them again. 12,000 bars across the state are going to see the impacts of this 240,000 people. These the are the faces of the small business owners of Louisville. Their world has been turned upside down. Dreams of owning their own business were on the verge of collapse. Some business owners had a terrible feeling about the coming storm. Mark Overhalzer and his partners closed Tilt, a downtown arcade, on March 15th. Their business had all but stopped because of the coronavirus scare. Sarah Lynch closed her business, Assorted Goods and Candy, 
six days before the governor's order to do so. She said, despite many of the other local businesses staying open, I closed my doors, shed some tears, and went home. Louisville was built on hard times. In the 1880s, immigrants from Italy, France, and other European countries came to work in the coal mines. The work was dangerous. They earned just a few dollars a day. The mines in Louisville fueled the homes and growing towns of Denver and Boulder. They built new lives. They built a community, and some of them started small businesses. Despite the hardships, the people of Louisville persevered and eventually prospered. The Miner's Memorial statue stands tall in the center of downtown. It's a reminder of the hard work and determination it took to build this town. But the early residents of Louisville never had to deal with anything like this. Today, President Trump is saying that he wants America to be back up and running by Easter time. That is an idea that medical experts, his own medical experts say, would likely be right in the middle of this crisis. By April 1st, stunned business owners were scrambling to figure out their next move. Jenny Lavage owns The Singing Cook, a kitchen item shop on Main Street. Hers and other retail shop owners were deemed non-essential and ordered to close. This is my sole source of income, Jenny says. My biggest fear? paying for next month's rent. Restaurants and bars in Louisville, like elsewhere, are considered essential. Many remain open for delivery and takeout only, but it is not business as usual. Fred Burns owns 740 Front. It's a fine dining restaurant. There's no blueprint for this, Fred said. In business school, they never taught us how to run a restaurant during a pandemic. Fred says there is just a 50-50 chance that 740 Front will survive. In a town built by immigrants, it is their modern day counterparts who are perhaps struggling the most. Double Happy serves Asian cuisine and is the oldest continuing business in downtown Louisville. It was opened in 1981 by the older brother of V. Vin. V's family understands hardship. As a little boy, he grew up in Saigon during the Vietnam War. Constant sound of gunfire and bullets raining down on the roof are forever seared into V's memory. He vividly remembers the chaos surrounding Saigon in April of 1975. After the fall of Saigon, his older brother escaped and became one of the many faces at a refugee camp in Thailand. Eventually, a human rights organization and a Colorado family sponsored V's brother to come to the U.S. He settled in Louisville and in 1981 started Double Happy. Five years later, V's brother was able to arrange for nine family members to escape Vietnam. In 1986, 15-year-old V arrived in Louisville and he has been working for the family business ever since. 
Double Happy has survived the oil bust of the 1980s, 9-11, and the Great Recession. But V is not sure Double Happy can survive this. He says the restaurant has the resources to last through May. Down the street, Gustavo Parra and his family find themselves in the same frustrating situation. Seven years ago, he and his wife, Marina, opened Casa Alegre, family Mexican cantina. Since the pandemic began, Gustavo has seen an 80% decline in sales. Sales of margaritas, beers, and other alcoholic beverages account for 40% of Casa Alegre's total revenue. With little or no revenue being generated, Gustavo still has to pay the bills. The cost for rent and taxes is more than $10,000 a month. Gustavo and Marina grew up outside of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Casa Alegre represents the fulfillment of his dream of owning a restaurant in his adopted country. To survive, Gustavo not only needs to feed the community, he needs to feed his family. Four-year-old Gabriela is too young to understand the virus, but old enough to understand something is seriously wrong. Gustavo Parra is a proud husband, father, and provider. He is fighting for his business. Most importantly, he is fighting for his family. We can keep going until June 1st, he says. After that, I don't even want to think about it. For now, Gustavo and his five children, along with his wife, Marina, will do everything they can to keep their dream of Casa Alegre alive. At this point, a cloth face mask or scarf should be part of everybody's personal hygiene practices. Governor Jared Polis is asking Coloradans to wear a non-medical face mask anytime they're in public. CDC is recommending the same. Now you might have trouble buying one. Good thing is they are very... By the first week in April, businesses in downtown Louisville were beginning to accept that this crisis was not going away anytime soon. In the darkness of a coronavirus winter, the people of Louisville persevere by embracing hope and humor. Wendy Wassum owns a downtown gift boutique called Old Friends. On this day, she chose two gift soaps to wash away the blues, social anxiety, and day drinking. Down the street at the Singing Cook, Jenny Lavach found a kitchen towel that put a smile on her face. For Jenny, these words pretty much sum up the whole ordeal. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Gary Shapiro in Louisville, a town hard hit by COVID-19. Using a still camera, photojournalist Chris Wheeler has been documenting what business owners here have been going through. It's a case study, really, one black and white picture at a time of what so many towns and cities have been going through. It is a raw, emotional, and honest look at a coronavirus winter. New numbers from the State Health Department today 15 more people have died from COVID-19. The total number of deaths... By the first week in April, the small business owners of downtown Louisville were coming to grips with a bitter reality. Their restaurants, shops, and other businesses were not opening anytime soon. Bittersweet Cafe was shut down completely for more than two weeks. Bittersweet is more than a coffee shop. 
It is the social network of downtown Louisville. Owner Azadeh Walsh has opened the doors for carry out only. She's seen about an 80% drop in business. It has become the new normal in town. For Azadeh and the other owners of small businesses here, the uncertainty is paralyzing. All they can do is peer out their windows and think of happier times, days they call BC before coronavirus. For eight Fridays every summer, people gather in downtown Louisville for a celebration of hometown. Street fair is part 4th of July, part music festival, and a little bit of Mardi Gras. It's Louisville at its happiest. If you want to know why Louisville is constantly ranked as one of the best places to live, all you have to do is look at the faces here at Street Fair. The number of confirmed cases of the virus around the world is now close to 2 million. About 120,000 people have died. By mid-April, the businesses in Louisville realize that to survive, they must adapt. Moxie Bread Company quickly transitions from serving coffee and bakery items to becoming a small town general store. Lulu's Barbecue and Verde Mexican restaurants roll open large garage style windows and create a perfect carryout place. Boutiques like My Saving Grace and Eleanor and Hobbs beef up their online services. While Pitter Patter, a children's clothing boutique, now sells puzzles and games online to parents looking to keep their homebound children busy. But for other businesses, the transition is much more challenging. Fred and Robin Burns own 740 Front, a steak and seafood restaurant. A few weeks earlier, they could never have imagined that fine dining would turn overnight into curbside dining. Fred says, our business model is changing. Who knows what the formula is anymore? Even the most popular and well-known business in downtown Louisville is not immune. The Waterloo is Louisville's classic watering hole. Like other restaurants, the Waterloo's only revenue comes from takeout and delivery. For people there, the day the Waterloo was forced to close its doors is the day the music died. The restaurant is well known for its God bless Johnny Cash bumper sticker. Now, in the midst of this coronavirus winter, the Waterloo must walk the line between operating at a tremendous loss or shutting down completely. The management feels a duty to remain open at all costs. We have to be here for the community, says GM Patty Apodaca. It's a lot of pressure to make everyone believe we will be okay. But adapting alone will not save the Waterloo and other businesses here. To survive, they need a lifeline from the federal government. So many began to apply for loans from the Small Business Administration. Now the federal aid program designed to keep them afloat has run dry. And then even Mother Nature piled on. Hi there, I'm meteorologist Kathy Sabin. Welcome to a winter wonderland for the second time in this... Boulder winter. County bore the brunt of the April 16th snowstorm. Some 15 inches fell in downtown Louisville. And just when it seemed that things could not get any worse, something remarkable began to occur. The residents of Louisville began to leave their homes 
and support their small town businesses. Because of overwhelming online demand for Easter gifts, Sarah Lynch reopened assorted goods and candy. Hundreds of Easter baskets were delivered or picked up by Louisville residents. The three breweries in town saw regulars return, even if it was for carry out only. Restaurants like Bob's Diner and Lucky Pie Pizza saw a steady increase in business. And so did Casa Alegre. On a typical year, Cinco de Mayo is their busiest day. This year, Gustavo Parra feared the worst. He was wrong. The lines outside and in Casa Alegre began about five o'clock and did not let up for hours. Louisville residents Bradford and Guerra Lewis spoke for so many here when they said, we came because our family wants to support their family. Even the city of Louisville did its part. With problems plaguing federal loans, Mayor Ashley Stolzman and Councilperson Caleb Dickinson led an effort for the city to award 70 municipal grants. It was another lifeline when the small businesses needed it most. Behind the face shield is Vivin. Underneath the mask is a smile. On May 2nd, Double Happy received a city grant. The $5,000 will help Double Happy pay its annual $22,000 property tax. These days in Louisville, even the good news is bittersweet. Six weeks ago when this all began, Matt Mulkey said, tough times show who you really are. He is living by those words. Matt is general manager of Zucca Italian Restaurante. Through sheer willpower, he and his skeleton crew have kept Zucca alive. Zucca was one of the first businesses here to learn that they had received a federal grant. That was a huge boost, but nothing compared to what happened a month earlier. On April 3rd, Matt had just delivered a pan of lasagna and two cannolis to a waiting customer. It wasn't until later that evening that Matt noticed the gratuity on the credit card receipt. I looked closer and thought to myself, you gotta be kidding me, he said. For a $54.32 order, the tip was a jaw-dropping $500. Acts like these are a reminder to all here that in the midst of a coronavirus winter, kindness is the greatest gift of all. It's either a return to normalcy or a brave step into a new world. On May 9th, for the first time in more than 50 days, these places in downtown Louisville are open for business. At 11 a.m., Jenny Lavatch props open the doors of the singing cook. In late March, Jenny was concerned about paying the next month's rent. In early May, she received a federal grant. Nine days later, restaurants were allowed to reopen. Bob's Diner is the first. Owner Bob Thiel says it feels like Christmas. For Bob and his son Trevor, this day is the gift they have been waiting for 72 days to unwrap. But there are changes. State guidelines mean less tables, less revenue, and no bar stools. 
For most in downtown Louisville, opening day brings all kinds of emotions. Sort of like a weird combination of your first date and a date with the dentist. We're touch free, says Zuka GM Matt Malky. Safety is our top priority. Gustavo Para is happy. A few weeks earlier, Casa Alegre received a loan from the federal government. Today, the phone brings more good news. Reservations. For now, only the back patio is open to diners. All are happy, except for Gustavo and Marina's kids. During the shutdown, they had transformed the back patio into a soccer area. One diner in downtown Louisville says, it feels like old times. Another calls it surreal. It is indeed surreal when old times means just a few months ago. Reopening fine dining restaurants like Poor Winehouse and 740 Front, that's the biggest challenge of all. At Poor, Patrick Walsh is having problems staffing up. Only a handful of my furloughed employees are willing to come back to work, Patrick says. Many are reluctant to give up their unemployment benefits. Fred Burns of 740 Front says, reopening is not as easy as switching on the lights. On June 3rd, his patio was finally opened, but the dining room remains closed for now. Fred says, we're gonna fight like hell and see what happens. With a new season of uncertainty, the future is as hazy as a gravity brewing IPA. Speaking of gravity, the regulars have returned. Jack Hindinger cannot assume his normal seat at the bar, but he doesn't mind. It feels great to be back, Jack says. The beer tastes better here than at home. I don't know why. Today, on this beautiful spring day, the color is beginning to return to downtown Louisville, Colorado. Every small business begins with a dream. Like so many across the country, these small business owners have seen their dreams come crashing down. To survive, they will need perseverance, luck, and a little moxie. But at least the future looks a little brighter now after having survived the coronavirus winter. <laughs>